So studying veterinary medicine, you can just go into a rabbit hole of so many details. Okay, so my notion. I think I need a boba break. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is May and I'm a final year vet student at Cambridge. And today I will talk about how I studied at vet school. And also just a side note, our results came out today and I passed! Ah! I just feel so relieved and yeah, I just feel so relieved. I was so stressed but now I feel like, yes, we passed the written exams and we are, well, almost technically vets and i'm just so excited i'm so excited anyway okay so the whole point of this video is to show you how i studied at vet school and hopefully some of these tips can help you i'll split this video into three sections so the first section is basically the fundamentals of what i think studying that worked best for me in the second part i'll talk about the simple framework that guided my studying process and the third part of this video i'll talk about my notion setup that i religiously used towards the end of my final year which helped me so much to pass my final exams so let's go so your fundamentals are some of these study tips that i've picked up through watching loads of youtube videos and also learning from friends and i think this is is what the study tube sphere has been talking about and it might sound a bit repetitive but we'll just go through it anyway so the first thing is active recall and space repetition so active recall is when you learn something you then quiz yourself by asking yourself questions on that topic and see if you can recall that information actively active recall and then space repetition is that when you study you leave a length of time for example one or two hours in between your study period and then you go back to the topic and then you can also space it out even longer so like you study about cardiology today and then two days later you revisit that topic and test yourself and the idea is that the space repetition and active recall will reinforce the information in your minds and this is a very simple explanation but I'll link some resources below that you can go further into it if I didn't explain this too well. Anyway, active recall space repetition, important. The second thing is to make sure that you understand the content that you're learning because memorizing everything is just not sustainable or feasible and it's not fun. Like if you understand something, it will make sense to you and you remember it better and you actually can apply it to like clinical cases. So yeah, make sure you understand the content. And how do you know that you understand the content? You try and explain it in your own words. So try and imagine that you're explaining it to a five-year-old so you have to break down these difficult concepts into easy to understandable ideas so you can try and practice and talk to your stuffed toy animal for example and explain it to them or you can explain that concept to a friend and then they can check if your understanding is correct if they understand what you're saying and if you are able to put what you learn in your own words that is a sign that you understand the content and it also reinforces the knowledge in your head and then another thing is that studying a little bit every day helps so i'm not a fan of cramming the day before the exam like just cram through everything i think it's more effective if you do bit by bit let's say like you know 15 minutes a day or like half an hour a day like five months before an exam so that you sort of familiarize yourself with the content and then as the days go by if you do a little bit each day it sort of like reinforces your memory and reinforces your knowledge again and again and again and again it's repetition okay repetition helps <laughs> another thing is the pomodoro method i found that really useful because so how i use the pomodoro method is it's like 25 minutes of work and then like five or ten minutes break right the idea is that you set a timer for 25 minutes and then i like to list down a goal for that session learn about congenital heart diseases for example in that 25 minutes so then by setting the timer it sort of forces me to get to work quick so that you know by the time when the timer is running out i have to make sure that i learn these five different diseases for example the idea is that you have an outcome goal from that session itself and setting the timer just kicks your butt to work so that you actually get something done instead of just sitting down for like three hours and reading through notes but you're not actually actively absorbing information if that makes sense another thing is that i found that group quizzes and group study sessions help me a lot some people hate group studying some people love group studying i belong to the group that loves group studying and i think it's important to find people who have the similar wavelength as you so that you know not to stress too much on a topic when you're discussing it so i enjoy group study sessions because it challenges me to explain a topic to a 
friend and I learn better when my friend explains things to me. I absorb things better when I hear it or when someone tells me about it instead of me reading um, a paragraph about it. Also, I was really lucky because I had friends who... I have friends! I had friends who also enjoyed this group study sort of vibe that we had and we were on a similar level of like, you know, we're not too stressy about things when we discuss things and if we don't know about a topic, we help each other to understand it better instead of feeling bad that we don't understand the topic, if that makes sense. So I think it's, it's important to find friends who you can work well with and also like not get too distracted because sometimes group study sessions can be distracting when you, you know go off topic and like talk about something else or if you start arguing because you don't agree about the interpretation of some topic. So find a group that you can work well with and be productive together with and it's so much more fun like when we had group study sessions we would order pizza and we would like just chill and eat and like have some breaks together while studying hard as well so it's worth worth experimenting and finding if it works for you Another thing I did was I listened to veterinary podcasts. I have a video about the top five favorite podcasts uh, link, so I'll link somewhere. And then I found that listening to these podcasts casually, like, you know, when you're going grocery shopping or like when you're going for a walk, I enjoy it. Like some people would hate it because they're like, oh, vet med everywhere. I need a break from studying vet. But for me, I find it really interesting and I just enjoy it. When I listen to these podcasts and then when I go back to my notes, it kind of reinforces the information and I find it like, oh, that's cool. That's how it presents in a clinical case when I listen to a podcast. So yeah, try it or, or not. <laughs> yeah. So the last thing I would say is to maybe try and take a quiz to see how's the best method for you to learn. Are you an auditory learner, a visual learner, or like maybe you work better with mind mapping and writing down ideas. Experiment with different study methods and be aware about whether you are actually absorbing that information. So I think reflecting on your past exams or reflecting on how you studied previously, that can help. So now I'll talk about my simple framework of how it guide my studying process. So S stands for saves time. So you want to find a studying method that saves time. So in first and second year, I used to handwrite all my notes. And what I did was I was just copying the handout onto paper and making it look pretty. And while it made me feel very productive, like, oh, I'm copying these things down, I wasn't actually learning any of it. Although I scraped by those two years, I felt like I could have studied better and be more efficient so that I had more time to enjoy social stuff with friends. Having said that, I did have time to play loads of frisbee and try different societies and also hang out with my friends. When it came to exam time, I found that the notes that I made weren't great notes and they were just copying from the handout. So it wasn't very effective and exams became really stressful. Even though I scraped by, it wasn't great so you know we live and we learn so I realized that I need to find study methods that save time so in fourth and fifth year I typed up my notes and, and towards final year I didn't even make notes I just annotated my handouts and condensed the important information into like flashcards which I will talk about later um, in the other sections so what I would recommend is annotate the lecture notes during the lecture highlighting the important bits when your lecturer brings it up so that you can just find focus on these sections when it comes closer to the exams. Which brings me to my next point, which is IM. I am in simple, which is important. So when you're studying something, ask yourself this question. Is this detail important for me in the exams and in my career? Is this gonna help me or is it just like some side note of someone's research that they've done that was interesting. So studying veterinary medicine, you can just go into a rabbit hole of so many details and so many different um, things that you can learn. But I think what's more important is you get the basic principles and the basic fundamentals down. Look at the bigger picture instead of getting bogged down by all the fine details in your course. So for example, in when diagnosing a GDV in a dog, the important bits are, you know, what are the main clinical signs, how does it present, and what are the 
diagnostic tests that you can do for it. And the minor details, it could be like, you know, what is the level of lactate in the serum and also the level of lactate in the peritoneal fluid. Those numbers, I don't think you have to know them by heart because there will be reference ranges when you conduct those blood tests and abdominal synthesis tests. So focus on learning the bigger picture and the main points instead of the fine details. And always ask yourself, is this important for the exam or life? Yeah, and then move on. So the next point is P, which stands for positive. You want to make studying a positive experience so that you're more likely to go back to it and it doesn't seem like a chore. Instead, it's something fun and treat it like a game so that you're more likely to do it and that it, it helps you study. Yeah. So how do you make it a positive experience? So for me, I really enjoy doing group studies with my friends. So that's a positive experience for me because it's like, you know, hanging out with your friends and learning together and laughing when we don't know the answers to the questions, but then learning and then it, it's, it's fun. Um, <laughs> and then another way that I found studying a positive experience is when I use Notion, the app that I will talk about in the other section that I just found it really easy to use and fun. So the last point is LE which stands for leisure. So you want to find a way to study that you can do so at your leisure. So I like to make it easy for me to revise so you know whenever you're just you have spare 10-15 minutes and you're sitting down you can just whip your phone up and then revise a little bit or read a little bit of your notes. The idea is not to make it a big ordeal so like you don't have to be like okay I'm gonna book this whole Saturday 10 hours I'm just gonna sit down and like bash out a lot of work because sometimes it, it doesn't work like sometimes you just end up getting distracted and then you get frustrated that you're not getting enough work done so what I like to do is schedule some fun things to do every day it could be like oh going to the grocery store and getting some iced coffee for example or getting bubble tea for example so you want to make studying easy for you to do so that you can carry on your life during all the other social fun activities as well so it could be like before you go for sports with your friends for example like half an hour you can just whip out your iPad or whip out your phone and then like do a little bit of revising and active recalling and I find that that if you make it easier for you to study you're more likely to do it and it's less it seems like less of a big hurdle less of like a heavy lift but it's it's more like a easy like an easy micro lift if that makes sense so for example if you're waiting for a bus and you have a spare five minutes you can you know whip out your phone and do some flashcards like Anki flashcards or for me I use Notion so that this whole revising process doesn't seem too stressful or but it seems natural to you so it's like you know brushing your teeth every day it, it, it becomes natural so like you know every day you just whip out your phone for 10-20 minutes and then do some questions or you know do some um, active recall yeah so by revising bit by bit every day you get your reps in without even realizing it so so the last part now is where I talk about my notion setup for finals so <clears throat> also at the very end I'll list some resources down as to where I find information for each animal species that we study lecture notes are great because they have all the information that you need to know but sometimes I find it too confusing so I always go back to these websites to check my information and to see like what is the main point of those diseases or whatever okay so my notion so I did my notion setup four to five months before exams so I needed to do something really quick I didn't want to make it look too fancy but you can probably do that if you have more time for your exams I wanted to keep it simple so save time and I just made it as simple and functional so it's not the prettiest notion setup but it worked yeah so here we go so this is my exam overview I have divided them into small animal farm animal equine and BPH which is uh, veterinary public health and here I have some notes where these were the things that I, were meant, I was meant to do before my exams and then I also had a countdown <clears throat> as to when my exams were happening and yeah so right now we go into these pages Oops. so if you go into this page you can see that I've listed down topics um, here so I list down the topics and the date where I 
made notes or made flashcards on those topics and these are the notes that I need to do um, and tags that I try to do but I gave up making tags because I couldn't really work out the function and like what the purpose was so anyway for example urology so in these pages I've listed down topics that are very common in exams and I think they might come up and then I created like mini flashcards by using the toggle function so you create a toggle and you sort of creates like a sub tab in, in the tab and chronic kidney disease in cats so for example the causes DX stands for diagnosis so diagnostic tests you do what are the poor prognostic factors in renal disease and like the TX means treatment and why phosphate restriction is needed in diet so these are like the common questions they usually ask so causes of CKD in cat then I can test myself what are the causes of CKD in cats so for example you have pyelonephritis you have FIP you have hypercalcemia and you also have amyloidosis loads of different causes so then I click this toggle and then I check if I got my answers right and then if I forgot about something I can always close the tab test myself again and then check so it's like a flashcard but it was very easy for me to set up you can use Anki as well which is very good at doing space repetition and everything but I just didn't like the setup and it was too I did this very last minute so I had to do it in a way that was quick and easy for me to learn anyway so CKD DX which is diagnostic tests so what kind of diagnostic tests you can do hematology and biochemistry bloods etc and also oh yeah clinical exam and clinical signs so then I have all of this listed down and again same concept I think about the answer first and then I say my answers or write it down on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard and then check my answers and if I miss anything out I make a note of it and then I test myself again so there you go very easy way to compile your notes and there's also another app called RemNote that also does this really well but I didn't have time to learn a whole new system so I'll put a link to all those different apps in the description box but yeah I use Notion so that's basically the simple setup and I put a date down because I can see when was the last time I revised that topic and if it was a really long time since I revised that topic I know to revisit it more frequently so that I don't forget about it so in farm animal I divided it into as you can see these sections like cattle repro cattle infectious non-infectious surgery management and sheep I did it in a very rushed manner so they are not super complete if you want further references on how to make this good Elizabeth has a really nice video on how she does this setup for her studies in medical school that's worth checking out and I'll link it as well into the description box so yeah and here i have like topics again date when i last did it and action on what to do and I, another thing i like about notion is that you can do all these toggle like sort of toggle slash flashcard things but you can also create pages so that at a glance you can just review all the important topics on a page but if you want to go into further detail you just click on do it into a different page and then you can make more notes on that topic for example like that yeah so that is pretty much my setup and the thing I like about Notion is that you can use it on your phone and your iPad as well as an app um, I will show you how it looks like so here it is how it looks like and that you can just flick through the different toggles and test yourself wherever you are and it's so simple and so easy and it looks good and it's user friendly so I really like it so basically just to summarize Notion put a table and put all your important topics in a column the date where you did it the notes so that you know if you need to revisit that topic or if you're confident in that topic and then use the toggle method to test yourself in like a flashcard manner done so the last part is the resources so 
I found that whenever I was confused in a topic in a certain species, I use these websites. So for equine information, I like to use the AAEP website because it has all the different consensus statements, for example, on laminitis, especially when in diseases that they don't actually really know about the pathogenesis yet. So it's useful to know what the general consensus and what people think about that disease is. So AEP for equine medicine. For farm, I use the NADIS website, the AHDB website, and also MSD, the Merck, vet, Merck Manual Vet Med website and for small animals I use MSD again and I use clinicians brief because I like their summaries on the different approaches to clinical cases they also have a newsletter which I would recommend subscribing to because they send you interesting articles to read and also VIN the veterinary information network which is free for vet students so I would really recommend you to capitalize on it because it have loads of resources anatomy resources, forums and questions and also like a virtual clinic where you can pretend like you are the vet and then you click different options and work through a case scenario. Um, I'm not sponsored to say any of this at all, I genuinely found all these websites very important and useful to me. So yeah, I hope that helps you. Last final few tips I guess is just have the right attitude when you are revising and facing your work. Remember that it's a marathon and it's not a sprint and don't let anyone shame you into feeling like you are working too much or you are not working enough. When I was in first and second year, I used to be very affected by what other people were doing and I fell into the trap of believing that people were like, oh, I haven't done any work and I actually believed them so I didn't work <laughs> as much as I think I should have. Uh, basically, I was very affected by it and I didn't understand why people would like to say, oh, I haven't done any work today, but they were secretly revising. Like, if you revise, you're revising. Like, why, why do we feel the need to shame people who work, you know? I've never encountered that until I came here to uni and people were like, oh, I did no work today, but actually they did some work and you're just like, really, why hide that fact? Anyway, ramble over. Just Try not to be affected about what other people are doing and trust yourself and do what feels right and just trust your own study process. And how to stop procrastinating? I find that I have two tips that maybe can help. So the first one is to put your phone away or use apps like Forest to grow trees so that you don't use your phone and scroll on social media. Because once you start scrolling, it's very hard to stop. So yeah, it's best to prevent these by, you know, putting your phone in a different room or use apps like Forest on self-control, things like that. Then second thing is to identify why you are procrastinating. I've come to realize that why I procrastinate is when I stumble up on a hefty topic and I don't, it's, I'm not very good at that topic so I try to avoid it by doing other stuff because I just don't want to face it. But you can troubleshoot it by finding a friend who is good in that topic and you just, you know, knock on their door and ask, you know, hey, can we chat about this for a bit? And that saved a lot of time for me during exams. I could just go to my housemates and be like, hey, can you talk to me about bovine viral diarrhea because I'm, you know, I'm a bit confused and then they explain things to you, you go through the topic together and you learn something and, you know, it just saves time and stops procrastinating and stops you spiraling into hating yourself for procrastinating. So yeah, be kind to yourself, be aware of why you are procrastinating and find ways to troubleshoot before you go into a procrastination spiral. And also, if you don't already know Ali Abdal, he has a bunch of study videos that are super helpful. They are about studying at medical school, but of course it's applicable to anything, so yeah. Also, throughout vet school, I used a laptop and an iPad to study, and I've been switching in between the two over the past few years. If you are interested, I might make a video on the apps I use on my iPad, and also which device I found studying better on. If you are interested, let me know in the comments and as always, take care, stay safe. I hope this was useful and see you in the next video.